What is up guys, welcome back to the Morris Minor Owners Club Avon Branch YouTube channel. Here you will find how-to guides, tips, journeys and anything else to celebrate the wonderful Morris Minor. My name is Liam and today I'll be taking you through a step-by-step -step guide on how to replace your clutch rod. If you are a fan of the Morris Minor and would like to see more then smash that subscribe button and don't forget to click the bell icon so you'll be notified whenever we upload. Be sure to stick around to the end of this video as Anthony will be sharing a very useful tip regarding sockets. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So Avon Branch member Anthony is replacing the clutch rod on Alice following it recently breaking. Due to the awkward location of the clutch rod, it's best to put your Morris on axle stands or ramps to allow you better access. Never trust a jack by itself, always support it by axle stands or something similar. So first off, you need to remove the existing rod. Due to the break with Alice's clutch rod, this was a lot easier. So there's a split pin that goes through the end of the rod, which needs to be removed along with the washer. That's one end free, and you should be able to remove the rest of the rod through the clutch fork. To make life a bit easier, you can take the clutch spring off of the fork. There are two nuts that allow you to secure and adjust the clutch. You'll most likely be able to reuse these, so be sure to remove them from the old clutch rod. You'll need 5 8 and half inch spanners to remove and replace them onto the new rod. In preparation for reinstalling the clutch rod, thread the clutch rod adjusting nut onto the rod along with the locking nut. Don't tighten the locking nut all the way, as it's highly likely you'll need to adjust it in situ. You can do this Now we're ready to start installing the new clutch rod. Feed the rod through the hole in the fork and the adjustment nut should sit snugly in place. Before securing the non-threaded end, it's always worth putting a dab of grease in the hole of the lever. Once the rod is in position, you can now reinstate the washer and the new split pin. Once the pin has been bent back, you can start adjusting the clutch rod. Now 
to push the rod towards the front of the car whilst pulling the fork towards the rear. Following this, tighten the adjusting nut until it's in contact with the clutch fork. A dab of grease is always useful in the long run. To test the play in the clutch, hook the clutch spring onto the fork and depress the clutch pedal. There should be around 20 millimeters of free play in the pedal. And as you can see, we need to adjust Alice's clutch a bit further. So to do this, remove the clutch spring and tighten the adjusting nut further and then repeat the previous step until you've achieved the right amount of free play. Once you're happy with this, tighten the locking nut and replace the spring. Taking your Morris for a drive will be the best way to gauge if it needs further adjustment. And that's it, how to replace your clutch rod. In a second, Anthony will share a very useful tip regarding socket types, so be sure to stick around. But that's it from me. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you found it useful. If you want to see similar videos, then please check out our channel and don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an upload. But for now, take care and I'll see you in the next video. So three types of sockets that I've got. This is the 12 pointed. So if you've got difficulties getting the socket onto a nut, maybe you've only got an eighth of a turn or something. This one is if you've got a really tight nut, you've got six faces and they act directly on the nut. And this one, to be honest, is okay as long as you haven't got anything tight to undo at all. So very tight nuts, access issues, eighth of a turn, uh, maybe don't buy this type. Yeah. Clutch rod replacement, seam one, take one. Action. Clutch rod replacement, seam one, take 97.
action.